Welcome to the Hot Desk Podcast. I'm Melody Brew from More Insights and Strategy, and I am joined by Robert Kramer, who is live in Dublin at the Software AG International User Group. Wow, you started your week when we were with IBM at the Masters, and now you're in <laughs> Dublin. What's going on there? You, you know, it's about being a world traveler. You have to, <laughs> you know, you can't just sit at home and, um, if you're going to be remote, you got to be in multiple places all the time so you can have fun with it. But yeah, I am in Dublin and coming off just a great interview that we had, and we'll talk about that a little later with our uh, master's um, tournament, which actually starts this week. But I'm in, I'm in Dublin at Software AG's annual uh, international user group. And it's really an interesting one because a lot of these conferences that we go to are, you know, 30,000 people. This has like less than a thousand. So you know, you can have a chance to really get to talk to people. You know, it's, a, it's an open format where, you know, customers can sit down with you, executives sit down with you. I had a one-on-one -on -one podcast today that's going to air in the next couple of weeks with the CEO of one of the, um, the the product offerings that they have. So his name's Garish Pantra, and he's the CEO of Stream Sets, which is one of the big product lines that they have. So. One of the, what's interesting is we always talk about data and they just sold software AG, their super iPass, which is a combination of web methods and stream sets. So here the, what's going on is that is their goal that they have. And they just sold their goal to, to actually to IBM. And what's left is a couple of different product lines. So the dust is settling here and we're, we're going to see in the next day or so really what their big product line are going to be going forward and it's a little bit um, uncertain but it looks like they're focusing on what's called like a data workflow product it's called aris and a couple other ones but it's a little bit of a an interesting format here but we're in dublin and you know we're able to really uh, enjoy that so the the team's been really good here that i've been working with the executives etc and it's it's a fun climate so i'm really enjoying it so thank you that's awesome. Um, you are a little glitchy, so but that's what happens. You know, I think that it's funny that when you're at tech conferences and they can't get the tech right, you know, <laughs> it's like it the the bandwidth is never there. You're you're coming through your 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 um, audio is coming through fine, but if anybody's watching and you see a little glitchy video, then wait, that's just it. That's what happens at these conferences. I don't know why. I was just bragging to someone that wherever I go. The Wi-Fi works, and all of a sudden, but <laughs> <laughs> so Software AG is a German company, and they're and they're really a global company. But what they specialize in is the integration of different applications. And so when we talk about data quality, we talk about how data comes from the anchor, which is the ERP, and it goes to these fantastic business applications. Example, like we talked about Adobe and Salesforce over the last couple of weeks, they're, they're really the middleware. So that super iPass takes all this different data, all these different types of application data, puts it together and it integrates it into those business applications. So it's really a solid opportunity to learn more about it, but that's been sold to IBM, just that portion. But you know what else is going on in the world today besides the masters which starts in a couple of days and software ag in dublin is we have this phenomenal you know event in las vegas called google cloud next what's going on from that perspective yeah so i, I think it's great that you're on a different time zone so you're able to kind of do two conferences at one i bet you're not getting any sleep <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so for me, you know, I'm really focusing on what's happening in Google Workspace for um, Google Cloud Next. So they've released some things, some new features in Docs, um, one of which is tabs, which it's kind of this thing I didn't know I needed, but now I'm probably not going to be able to live without. It's like a way to just organize all of your projects, workflows, everything within Docs without having to toggle back and forth to a bunch of things. Um, it, it's it actually just seems like one of those things that's like, how is it possible that didn't exist before? So I'm really excited about that. That's maybe a weird thing to be excited about. Um, but quite a few updates in Sheets, in Gmail, some really nice updates in Meet. 
Now we're a Google Workspace shop, so we use Meet a lot, but it's kind of more mm -hmm. out of convenience. It's not because it's the best one, but mm -hmm. they are adding some features that are, I think, really making it a competitive offering with some of the, you know, um, meeting platform as a verb, verbs out there. Um, we, you know, the different lighting, different um, ability to um, no, for noise cancellation in different environments, more adaptive noise cancellation. That a lot of really cool things changing in Meet. Um, there's also a new application called Vids, which is a video creation app. So, um, you know, making a pretty kind of easy way to make videos for work. Um, most of us, you know, mm -hmm. we make a video for work. We're not like you know, expert creatives, but this makes it pretty easy to just make kind of that AI assisted video for work. Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of Gemini updates, um, you know, I'll probably share a bigger kind of uh, analysis and wrap up of this after everything is over. But those are the things that I think kind of stood out to me. There is one thing I, I think this comes up uh, kind of often um, with security add-ons. So one of the things that Google Workspace added is this AI security add-on and it's $10 per user per month. So hmm. when I see stuff like that, I think, well, why is that why is that an add-on? I mean, to me that's like saying I sold you a car, now I'm going to sell you a seatbelt for your car. Oh, I love that. <laughs> you know? I mean, and I understand like you know, let's let's change that from seatbelts to brakes. Heavier cars need heavier brakes. So, you know, for certain applications, I can understand that more security is needed depending on what you're using, what you're doing. And so that AI add-on can be a benefit to some organizations. I just think it's vendors have to be careful about how they message that and how they create mm -hmm. add-ons for security because it's it's like they're saying, well, what you have isn't enough. Now you need to add this thing. So I again, like I said, you know, heavier cars need heavier brakes. And in, in some situation, it is probably necessary. But I just think when I hear security add-on, I'm like, well, is what I have not enough? Right? Like, why is, well, why is baseline not good enough? So that's where I'm well, coming from, Google Cloud Next. What are you seeing? Well, just to piggyback what you said, I think if they have new features, just say, hey, we have this feature. Don't call it out that it's like a new like module or new like components of the platform. Just make it included, show that it's innovating, that it's more robust and the customer gets more. But what, what I'm seeing is Gemini, like you were talking about, it really expanded a little bit more into the data you know, situation. So BigQuery um, really added it from a new product that they have, it's called Data Canvas which allows for a little bit more management of the data pipelines. They've also improved the, you know, the um, Alloy database, which allows migrations to be a little easier with Gemini. Uh, the vector indexing that they have is a, actually expand a little bit to handle BigQuery and Alloy to actually work to a little bit more together from a querying capabilities perspective. Also, they have a new product um, where they've uh, added more capabilities with uh, Gemini to give more with uh, the Google Workspace, which you were just talking about, but yeah. adding Looker into that, which helps manage the workflows of that data. Um, security operations, detecting um, more event data and um, recommending actions to take on if there's a problem with that data, and then to navigate users through the platform to actually solve the problem. So I think, um, they're doing a lot more and then threat intelligence, which you kind of mentioned the security that right. they're actually Gemini's handling that as well to find these behaviors from the threat actors. So Gemini was the topic, I, I believe mostly from my perspective the first day. So we're right in the middle of the second day. It feels like it's almost midnight here, but it's just kind of getting started in Las Vegas because it's such a big time difference. Yeah. But um, what, one of the things that I'm seeing that's synonymous between all these different events that I'm going to is that the data management seems to be a prevalent issue. And every time I talk about it, it's, I feel like there's deer in headlights. So what, what was interesting, I was having breakfast and this professor 
from one of the, a university in Germany sat down with me. He's like, can I sit down? I'm like, sure. And he said that his focus is data science, specifically in ERP. I'm like, welcome. So, <laughs> <It's your people. laughs> so it was my people. He must have saw me. And um, what was interesting, he says that nobody's focused on ground zero. And data always starts there. Even though people shelve it to the side because it's ERP, they don't want to talk about it. It's on premise. It's a legacy system. But all your master data sits there. And we talked about it has to be handled in some way. Um, it's just really interesting. One of the things that I threw out to them, you know, years ago, the, there was a new executive C-level position that was created called CISO. So I'm just wondering if we're going to get to a point where data quality change management is going to be an executive position where it has to be handled because of the fact that data management is, is not a gigantic topic in some of these um, events. What's your thought on that? Yeah, well, I think that's interesting because I think, you know, in collaboration and, you know, kind of that communication, the UCAS space, there's a lot more of, there's just more data that's coming into these platforms. And I think from a compliance standpoint, there has to be somebody who is managing that data yeah. from compliance, compliance and security. And so we are starting to see more executive positions that are like chief compliance officers um, and they are managing more of the handling and the the privacy issues around that data. But I do think there is that common thread throughout, which is the more data we have, the more security we need. And the AI is introducing all of these new threats into that. Mm -hmm. And the more, the more collaboration platforms that we have, the more that data is coming in and out. And so it's really kind of you know, stirring up this perfect storm. I think, you know, honestly, that's, it's one of the things that stands out so much about the Cisco acquisition of Splunk. It makes so much sense when you see, you know, Cisco with networking and then with collaboration and Cisco with the observability, you can't have any of those things operating without each other. So for them to yep. operate together, it just really makes a lot of sense. And I think that's a perfect example of how things are changing to need those components that work together and not be, you know, siloed off in, you know, some department somewhere where nobody cares about it. I mean, and it, it's, that, but that doesn't have a lot of visibility to it, right? Yeah, and I think that's a great topic that we can in the future talk about because one of the things that I talked about today with um, Garish was ecosystems and how strong they have to be for the customer. And I think these companies can grow even more with those ecosystems being at a different level. So companies can, can work together, which maybe they never have. They, they might've been competitors, but now they're, they're finding a way to work together because it takes too long to develop. But yeah. the biggest problem that I'm seeing is these, these systems are these SaaS solutions that everybody is adding more applications and then the technology stack is almost like a chaos of technology. And it has to be managed in a certain way. Now, that's a good and a bad thing to have that chaos. But at the same time, it adds some management, which comes back to that C-level position that I was talking about. But that's another subject. But really good trip over here. I'm excited to, um, to go into more detail and write, write it up and um, explore what the options are to, to work further with um, Software AG. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing all of your findings there. I feel like you're kind of ending one day and starting in the next. <laughs> so we, you're on a on a 24 hour cycle here. Um, be fun. Thank you, everybody else for joining us. It was just a, a quick little hot takes from Software AG International User Group and our quick thoughts from um, Google Cloud Next. Join us when we can talk about it in further detail. But for now, I'm Melody Brew, and this is Robert Kramer from More Insights and Strategy. If you like what you saw, please hit the subscribe button. Give us a like. Follow us on Twitter. Let us know what you want to hear about next, and we'll tell you where we're going to be next because we're going to keep doing these kind of hot takes from wherever <laughs> we are on the road. Thank you for joining us, and Robert, have a good night and, and a good start to your day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.